to wrap up and conclude and uh, finish up the the talking about Surah Fatir, inshallah, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life, give us time, we will continue, inshallah, next week, starting next week, talking about Surah Yasin. And uh, actually, the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ended or had concluded talking about Surah Fatir, it, it carries good news. And it carries lots of good things for all of us. And that's why I wanted the end of that surah to be the good news, to be the bushra, the glad tidings that we are carrying for the brothers and sisters and, and for those who are watching us right now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about certain concepts of inheritance. Allah said, and we had inherited or we had allowed that book means the revelation. It's not only the Quran, by the way. It's all the revelation came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah had allowed that book to be inherited by the servants that he had chosen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose, selected, some servants, ibadina. And I just wanted to remind you, we have talked before about the concept of ibad. And I have heard Dr. Rahim said, Abdullah or Abdu. Okay? Abdullah means the servant of Allah. The scholars had said, and that's the best title ever that the human being can have in this life, to be his name connected to Allah. So you say Abdullah, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Karim. Okay, so Abdu, then the servant of, then you put a name of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the best thing. And let me just remind all of you, that the best title for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not Ya Ayyuhan Nabi, is not Ya Ayyuhan Rasul, the best title in the Quran when Allah had related the Prophet Muhammad to himself. When Allah said, فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى He had revealed to his servant what he revealed. And Allah, how Allah started Surah Al-Isra. Subhana alladhi asra bi'abidihi. Allah had made that nine journey, night journey to his servant. Bi'abidihi. So Allah said in Surah Fatir the same concept. We had allowed that to that revelation to be inherited by our servants. Ibadina the servants of Allah. And pay attention to some. You, you remember the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when one of the companions, the hadith means the narration that we got from one of the companions, when he, after the death of Rasulullah, he said, we can see the inheritance of Rasulullah now is been distributed in the masjid. So people were in the marketplace buying selling. And when they inherit, when they heard the word inheritance, you know, lots of people get crazy with that word. Inheritance. If I told a Dr. Yusuf, Brother Rashid, Brother Muhammad Khan, you got inheritance somewhere. He will jump up from his chair. Imam, where is my inheritance? So the Sahabi, ذهب إلى السوق وقال, ميراث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يوزع في المسجد يقسم في المسجد The inheritance of Rasulullah has been distributing in the masjid. So people ran. People ran to the masjid. And what did they find? A halaqa, a circle, dars, khatira, lecture, whatever you name it. Okay? So people said, 
where is the inheritance? We don't see gold, silver coins, nothing at all. Where is the inheritance? He said, that's the inheritance. The ilm. That's why in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Inna al-anbiya. Allahu Allah, I like this hadith. Inna al-anbiya. Lam yuwarrithu. Dirhama. Wala dinaran. Wa innama warrathu al-ilm. فَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ أَخَذَ بِحَظٍ وَافِرٍ The prophets and the messengers did not leave dinars, like coins, currencies, did not leave money behind, but they left ilm as an inheritance. Whoever got this ilm, whoever got this knowledge, he really got too much. He really got something valuable, something precious in his life. And that's why. They used to say, Al-Ulama'u Warathatu Al-Anbiya. The scholars are the inheritance of the prophets. So the inheritance of the prophets are the scholars. Why? Because they got something from the knowledge of the prophets and the messengers. So, and now, Wallahi, this lecture, inshallah, you are going to remember this lecture in Jannah, inshallah. Because I came tonight with the intention to deliver the good news, to deliver the glad tidings to all of us, no matter who you are. But but bear with me and have some patience, inshallah. Malik, Malik, do you have patience, inshallah? Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Yes, jazakallah khair. So Allah said, ثُمَّ أَوْرَثْنَا الْكِتَابَ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَيْنَا مِنْ عِبَادٍ we had been given that book, Revelation, as inheritance to those servants that we had selected. Then Allah started to classify those servants. Allah said, فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِ Some of them from the servants of Allah. Pay attention. From the servants of Allah. Some of them will wrong themselves. Zalimun linafs. That's category number one. Wamin hum muqtasid. The second department, the second category, they are moderate. Sometimes they sin, they repent, they do good deeds, then they fall again into sin. They are moderate. Muqtasid. And number three, وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ And the last one, those who are foremost in doing the good deeds by the permission of Allah, means they are in rush, in hurry, they are hastening to do the good deeds. They are expert professionals. So now, number one, ظَالِمُ لِنَفْسِ wrong themselves, Moderate means they are sometimes, they sin, sometimes they are good, then they fall, they repent, you know. And the last one, the experts, the professionals. Now, let me tell you which category we can put ourselves in. Allahu Akbar, MashaAllah, you see, I, I cannot say it, okay. <laughs> I'm not that brave too. Okay. <laughs> may, may Allah make us amongst them. I mean, Ya Rabbi, I mean. You know what? You aim high, which is great. Wallahi. You aim high. But let's go and, and show some humbleness. Okay? <laughs> okay. If you said you are the first one, you wrong the, yourselves, do you think that you are doing just to yourself, maybe not. If you said moderate, maybe that's the best category. We fall into sin, we go back, we feel regret, we repent to Allah, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out to the path of Allah. But now, you know the word the ظَالِمُ لِنَفْسِ Why? Why he is wronging himself? Because actually, the one who disobeyed Allah all the time, he is not doing injustice to Allah. 
He's doing to himself. He's correcting himself. He's destroying himself, by the way. So, so when you destroy yourself, when you corrupt yourself, and that comes over you, like you bear the consequences of the bad deeds. Like Sayyidina Adam. When they, Adam and Eve, Adam and Hawa, when they disobeyed Allah, they said, oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves. If you would not forgive us, we will be amongst the losers. That's actually what happened. But now, sometimes, by the way, and uh, and, and that's another, another discussion amongst the scholars. Begin, before I give you the good news, have more patience, inshallah. Okay? So when you talk about one person, one individual Muslim, you could be in your life, you get to the three stages. So you will not remain only moderate. So in Ramadan, for example, maybe you are the third category, the brother Muhammad Ali had mentioned. Okay? Maybe when you fall into sin, you will be the first one. Then you repent. Then you move to the second one. So maybe in your life, you was a bad person, for example. Maybe somebody was a bad person sometimes. Then he repented to Allah. Then he upgraded his iman and he became the third category. But anyhow, listen to the next verse. I remember when I was in Al-Azhar University, I studied this and it's still in my mind. The, the, the scholars talked about this specific verse in Surah Fatir. They said, this is the best and the greatest plural verb in the entire Quran. Afdal, fi'l, jam, fil Quran bi akmali, fi Surah Fatir. The best plural verb in the entire Quran in Surah Fatih. Why? Allah talked about the three categories. You remember. So which of them will enter to Jannah? Which of them can enter to Jannah? You might say the third. Somebody will say two. The good news that the three of them will enter to Jannah. This is the good news that I carry tonight. The three of them will be able to make it to Jannah by the mercy of Allah. Because you remember how Allah classified, how Allah named them at the beginning? Exactly. They are included in the servants of Allah. Yes, they have wronged themselves, but there is a high chance the potential is so high to be forgiven and to be included by the mercy of Allah. That's why Allah followed this verse by the word Jannatu Adinin Yadhulunaha. Allahu Akbar. Jannatu Adinin Yadhulunaha. Because if Allah is talking only about two, Allah would say Yadhulaniha. Yadhula. If, if Allah say about only one, Jannatu Adnin Yadhuluha. But Allah talked about the three. Jannatu Adnin Yadhulunaha. They all will be taken under the mercy of Allah. Imam, is that mean that we will we need to wrong ourselves? No. But Jannah has levels. And you need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I'm telling you how Allah classified those, even those who wronged themselves, Allah called them ibadina. Ibadina. And, and let me give you the golden statement. That's how the scholars will talk about the fiqhi rules. Al-ba'ithu. في الحكم على الأشخاص يتحدد بإنكارهم للفرض أو بتقصيرهم عنه 
فإن كان إنكارا خرجوا عن الملة وإن كان تقصيرا شملهم الإسلام The scholars are differentiating between those who are dealing with the rules of Allah based on their position. If they are denying, so they are totally out of Islam. If they are denying, rejecting, denying the, the pillars of Islam, the, the, obligation, the obligations of Islam, they will be totally about out of Islam. But even if he didn't make the worship, the action of the worship of Allah and his reason that he is lazy or his reason that he forgets by, or his reason that the shaitan is playing with his mind, he is still in Islam. In Islam. That's why. Let me correct one of the big misconceptions. <laughs> that we, lots of parents actually, had done wrong to their children by killing this. You have your own child. Out of laziness, out of forgetting, out of even disobedience. He does not pray. So what is the evidence that the father will use to remind his son of Salah? He will say, don't you know that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said the only difference between us and the disbelievers is leaving Salah? Now you left Salah. Now you are amongst the disbelievers. Is that right? No. No. Not, not, not this one. Let me tell you why we misquote this hadith. Because this hadith was made for those who are denying, denying the salah, not leave the salah or delay salah out of laziness. If you, like, let's say, I will give you a, like a very strange scenario. Imagine if we have a man who born as a Muslim. He said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah and he never, never prayed. He never prayed. When you talk with him, why don't you pray? He will tell you, because I'm, I acknowledge that there is salah. I believe it's one of the pillars of Islam, but I am lazy to do it. I am careless. I am heedless. Can you call him kafir? So if your son, out of laziness, out of something, then you tell him, you know, the only difference between us and the disbelievers is to leave salah. And what's the, what is the result of this? What he will extract? Oh, I left salah, so I am a disbeliever now. Now you give him no room to go back to Allah. Since I am a disbeliever, okay, so what do you want from me? I have left Islam altogether. And who judged this? You as a father. So you put your child to the edge. We, we call it in, the, in the, the, the Arabic expression, you already slaughtered him. You give him no room, no chance to go back to Allah. You told him you are a disbeliever because you have left two days, three days of salah. And because you are mad at your son. No, you can tell him something better than this. You remind him of what? Surah Al-Ma'un. فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ Right? الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ My son, Allah had prepared a punishment in Jahannam for those who delay the salah. So, here is the evidence in topic, in topic. It is relevant to the, to the crime, quote unquote, okay? To the crime, but do not exaggerate in the description of the crime to the point 
that you put your own son who is Muslim, alhamdulillah. Maybe he is fasting Ramadan, but he does not pray. Then you tell him, the only difference between us and the disbelievers is to leave the... He is making siyaham in Ramadan. Yes, he is wrong. I do not agree with what he make, but choose the best of the evidence. Only, only give hope to go back to Allah. And actually, I cannot find better than the example of the one who killed 100 persons. You, you remember? <laughs> yes, brother. Those not the Muslim, because you might have other shortcomings other than salah. Because if he said Muslimin, so that will be included for all. No, no, no. I mean, if you pray, but you delay your salah sometimes, you miss some salawat. You still called Musalli because you believe in Salah. And that's and that's actually supports my idea that yes, Allah called it wild. Allah told them about Salah, that they miss Salah, but Allah called Wailun Lil Musallin. He's still calling them Musallin, Musalli. He didn't take that out from them. Even if they delayed, yes. Even if they missed some, yes. They are, who, who described them? Me? Allah. Allah said, Musa Liyin. So how come you call him, the difference is to be a believer, a disbeliever is Salah. That's not the evidence. That evidence will be used for somebody who completely denies salah. Then like if you talk to your, to your son, may Allah protect our children. Allahumma amin. If you talk one day and he said, you know what? I do not acknowledge that there is something called salah. I do not believe at all that there is something called salah. Then you, you bring that evidence. You, you got my point? So all, always give hope in going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why if you told somebody for doing something minor or even something major, you know what? Allah is angry at you and there is no back, there is no chance to go back to Allah. So what is going to happen? Yes, <laughs> you will make the worst of him. And they said in the Arabic proverb, when the camels reach to a certain age, you cannot get a child or even milk of it. Halas. There is no hope for any, for any production. And it's the same. The one who killed 100 persons, the man said, who can, who can prevent you from going back to Allah? Who can stop? Who can be in between you and Allah? You, yes, you can repent. Yes, you can be a good servant again. Yes, you can be a righteous servant to Allah. But you need to, to do something. Take an action. Leave that city and move from, an, from a city to another city. Then Allah will accept your repentance. Then he got died in the middle. And, and you, you know what? The, the land, the land shrunk. Yes, that's by the mercy of Allah. The land has shrunk. Yes. His chest. The hadith on who killed 100 people. The hadith says, When he died, he died in his chest. When he felt death came to him, he dragged himself forward only with his chest. His body couldn't move. But he kept moving his chest forward. To show Allah, I am sincere in my repentance. So there is a narration said, فَغَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ Allah had forgiven him because he moved, he moved his chest. He dropped on the ground. 
and he started to, the body cannot move. He only moved the chest many times to show Allah, I am, I was so sincere. But what can I do? Death prevented me from going to the land, the righteous land, let's say. So only this, with his movement of his chest, Allah ghafar Allah. Allah had forgiven him. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. So the three categories of people, Allah said they will enter Jannah. Then Allah gave us long description about what they are going to find in Jannah. Of course, we don't have time, but I leave that portion to all of you. The last page of Surah Fatir, please, before you go to sleep, read that page. And actually, you will get to my point and you will remember what I mentioned actually about the three categories. That's the best wow al jamaa The best wow for the plural verb in the entire Quran. If somebody asked you, wow al jamaa wow al jamaa It's wow for the plural. If I said, ya'kul, I would say for the jamaa for the group, I would say, ya'kulun, right? Hajwajdi. Arabi dars, mashallah. Okay, okay, so, ya'kulun. Allah said, yadkhulunaha. All, they will enter Jannah. May Allah shower all of us with his mercy. May Allah let us all enter Jannah to Firdaus. May Allah forgive our sins, ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the righteous servants, ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khayran. Barakallahu feekum. We have our brother, mashallah, brother Matasim had brought some dinner, inshallah. I hope he did something great tonight. <laughs> inshallah. May Allah accept from you, brother. Thank you so much for your kindness. May Allah accept from you. Please have your sunnah. Then you are all invited for the dinner, inshallah.